Welcome to the 2015.3 No Audio Explained video. This is where we'll be going through some of the fundamentals of why the audio broke in the first place and why deleting the files in the media folders worked as a fix, for most of you that is. So to start, let's introduce a few focus questions. One, why does Premiere conform? Two, how does Premiere conform? And three, where does it conform to? Now, this is key to fixing the problem of having no audio in the timeline. Let's jump straight in to answer question one. Premiere conforms any file you drag in. In the case of video files, it doesn't directly conform the video, but instead it conforms the audio embedded within the video file. A standard .mp4 file will most likely have a .aac audio format embedded within it. This type of audio format is referred to as being a lossy format. As described on a whatis.com definition page, lossy compression reduces a file by permanently eliminating certain information, especially redundant information. In simpler terms, a lossy compression brings the size of an audio file down by removing certain bits of information that are not exactly needed. This means that when it is uncompressed, all the information is not exactly present, unlike the lossless compression. However, all this doesn't answer our question. When the audio is embedded into the .mp4 container, Premiere struggles to work with it. It will convert the audio into a compatible format and save it within a .cfa file. I won't go into too much detail as I don't know too much about the subject, however, this is the information that I found after a couple of quick Google searches. Question 2. I did some research into this topic, however, I didn't find much on it. I can, however, make an educated guess and say that Premiere is probably using an internal audio transcoding engine that automatically ingests footage and converts embedded audio files into .cfa files. .pek files will also be generated for drawing audio waveforms within the project timeline. Question 3. This one is the key one. These aforementioned .cfa and .pek files are saved within a folder called Media Cache. I spoke about how you could delete the contents of this folder in my previous Premiere video, and now we know why it fixed the problem. Although the footage had been conformed by previous versions and was in the same location as before, 2015.3 could obviously not read the previously saved .cfa and .pek files. Conforming these files again meant that the CFA and PEK files were generated by 2015.3 and thus could be read. I really hope this answered a few more of your questions. If you do have more questions pertaining to this issue or any other issues you're having with Premiere, please leave them in the description and I will attend to them. The references that I use to research the focus questions featured in this video can also be found in the description. Thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate the support and have a great day.